All right, welcome, welcome. Here is your Artist of the Week, Leonardo da Vinci. We are finishing our Artist of the Week with my favorite artist pretty much of all time. Um, saved him for the last. So, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, amazing, amazing artist from the Renaissance, little Italian guy. Um, was alive around this time, very, very long time ago. And the Mona Lisa is not only his most famous painting, but one of the most, if not the most famous painting in the entire world. Um, and people wonder why, why is it so famous? And there's a few reasons. Um, now Leonardo da Vinci was one of those artists that we've talked about in the past where they, um, basically paint a lot of religious stuff, a lot of Jesus, a lot of stuff from the Bible, a lot of rich white people <laughs> like we have right here where, um, this is Lisa and, um, somebody basically paid Leonardo to paint a portrait of their wife named Lisa and she had to sit for this portrait portrait. And it's kind of a mysterious thing. Leonardo never finished it. He was always continuing to work on it and he carried it with him everywhere he went. He always kept this painting with him. So even though he was paid to make it for this lady, he never ended up giving it to them. And people wonder why. Why did, why was this painting so important to him? Um, so there's a few things about this that are mysterious. Like we said, he never finished it. He always carried it with him. Um, Usually when people sit for a portrait, it's for hours and hours, so they usually look really serious, but Mona Lisa has a slight grin to her, and people always kind of wonder, well, what is she grinning about? Another mysterious thing is her eyes, and that no matter where you move in the room, it looks like she is looking at you. Um, and um, some people think there's been debate over whether Mona Lisa is um, kind of a secret self-portrait of Leonardo da Vinci. Maybe he found himself, he kind of saw himself um, in this portrait as well, along with this woman. Um, so there's some mystery behind that. Now, um, some weird facts about this is um, Mona Lisa gives us some insight into the beauty standards of the time. If you notice, she has no eyebrows, and that's because a beauty standard back then was to have a really like broad forehead, so they'd shave off their eyebrows, and they'd even sometimes shave back their hairline a little bit just to create a really broad forehead. Um, and she was considered very beautiful for the time, and I hope you think so as well, and I hope you like this painting. But let's go ahead and get into Leonardo da Vinci's other paintings. Here we go! Oh, another one of his other most famous paintings is The Last Supper. Like I said, he was a lot like the other artists, and he painted lots of religious scenes, including Jesus right there. But if you take a look, take a look at all these lines that go back towards one point over here, up in the ceiling and everything. Everything converges back to this one point of Jesus over here. They use single point perspective. You guys learned about that. Um, and this was a huge, huge kind of art innovation at the time um, where it helped people draw things and paint things in a more realistic way. And it helped give depth to these paintings because before they used to make paintings look really, really flat and kind of awkward. But now we have this room where it looks like we can actually walk through this place and maybe take a seat at this table. And we could go behind the table and look through um, these windows back here. Um, so this, this room had a lot of depth and that's because of single point perspective. Okay, we have another religious scene here. Um, I do believe this is the baby Jesus getting baptized. Okay, and on to Leonardo da Vinci's exciting stuff. I think this is really exciting. So Leonardo da Vinci was this amazing painter, yes, but he was also really interested in science and math and nature. And he had just like thousands of sketches um, in his notebooks of um, understanding nature more, biology, especially the human form, the body, the muscles. He was not afraid to take cadavers and like carve into them and see the muscles and the bones and figure out how all this stuff actually works because the human body is extremely complex and so things like the way a woman can get pregnant and carry a child he was interested in that so he actually went into these things and and learned more 
Um, he helped us discover many of the proportions of the human body. Um, our body, our, our arm span is equal to our height. And so with that, we can actually draw a perfect square around our body if we outstretch our, our legs and our arms, which is really cool. Okay. He was very, very interested in inventions. Um, he had lots of drawings of inventions of bridges, of uh, war machines, um, and of flying machines, inventions for the airplane, the hair helicopter, all these things he had ideas for. Now, he didn't have all the resources at the time to be able to make these things and to build an airplane, but he had the ideas and even instructions for building these things, including how to make a parachute. This is his little thing right here, his little sketch, and you can see here he has instructions for how to make it. And what's really cool is that 500 years later, people actually tried it. So they built a Leonardo da Vinci parachute according to his instructions, and if you watch this video, you can find out if it worked or not. Um, I'll give you a hint. The results were good. Okay, now I'm going to just bring up all your bullet points here so you can take notes in case you miss class and that's pretty much it just pause it on these notes copy them into your notebook and you could show me and get credit